is Steve Adelson from New York, and I play the Chapman Stick. I've been doing some demos here at the MIM, and first started playing guitar in 69. Uh, played jazz guitar through the 70s and started tapping a little bit on the guitar. And then Emma Chapman came to New York in 1983, and I saw him play it, and I said, well, if I'm going to tap on the guitar, I have to buy this instrument. I was a child in the 60s. I went to Woodstock, and I listened to Jimi Hendrix, and uh, Frank Zappa, and the Allman Brothers, and, and you know, all those groups of the 60s, the Beatles, of course, I grew up with that. And then in 1969, it was uh, actually for me like a summer of boredom. So my friend said, here's a G chord, and that was it. It was like a shot of heroin, like you're addicted to it. And, and uh, it just took off. And I was playing guitar with friends, you know, parties and stuff like that, and, but I need to learn more. So I started taking lessons with a guitar player named Charles Didier in Brooklyn. And it was just a thirst for knowledge. And it was a knowledge not just to learn songs, but to, to to be adventurous and learn new techniques and, and explore the instrument as much as possible. And the guitar, you know, there's a history to it, so when I got to this, there was no history, so that exploration really was, was wide open. When you get the instrument, like I said, it's, it's, it's here's the instrument, figure it out. You know, now, now there's some internet lessons and there's books and things. At the time, there was nothing. The first time I played this was 1983 or 84. Uh, there was only Emma Chapman's book. But it's still, you still have to figure it out yourself that you couldn't go to get your local teacher. Uh, but I enjoyed that, the, the, you know, the thrill of discovery, you know, being Christopher Columbus on the Chapman stick. Um, to just find new, new voicings and, 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 and new explorations. And it's still music, it's still laid out, C major scale, still C major scale. The fingerings are different, the, the layout is different. Uh, so I enjoyed that exploration. Technique is, is uh, as I've said before in the demos, uh, similar to like a piano. When you hit the piano key, that doesn't produce the sound. It's the hammer inside that hits the string. So when I take my fingertip and hit the string, the string, the finger hitting the string hits the fret, which is these metal things, makes the string vibrate, and the pickup over here picks up the sound, which can also be changed. If I press a button, press this button, sound that's on there. Yeah, basically, you know, since you have two hands and a left hand, and, and there's split signals, so you can actually get two different sounds out of two different amplifiers. Uh, the bass would be coming from the left hand generally, so you're playing the bass here like this. And you have a free hand to play with the right hand kind of in the guitar area. Starting out with two different parts, and depending on where you want to take it, you can do three parts, four parts. It's uh, it's up to the individual. And and the great part is that it doesn't have a long history. So all the new players, uh, there's only about 5,000 instruments in the world, and all the players are figuring things out. I, sometimes I meet somebody who's been playing for two weeks, and they're doing things I never thought of. Well, for number one, when you have a, a different kind of instrument, it draws attention right away. So right away, it opens the door to to, to new fans. Then the technique. Uh, one of the best compliments I had was from a blind guy. And he heard me playing, he came over and says, I love your band. The music was crucial. I, I forget who, I think it was Tuscanini who said, if it wasn't for music, there'd be no reason to live. I, I might be quoting him wrong, but I think that's his quotes. Um, it's just a communication that there's a universal thing. I mean, you can go and have gone anywhere in the world and not been able to talk to people, but we play music together. Uh, I've gone to different neighborhoods in New York, and you walk in and you play this, this it's a different language. And it's, it's a great way to communicate with people, uh, certain musics. I mean, everybody has a, a song that they remember certain things happened that day, whether it's, it was good or bad. Uh, they hear a couple of notes, they go, oh, that was Joe's wedding, or, you know, a certain event that they associate with the music. The music has a feel, whether it's the dynamics of the music, the loud, the soft, the feeling of the music, the scale itself. Certain scales have a certain feel, and it could be Middle Eastern. 
So you can communicate just with a couple of notes, sometimes more than, you know, with words, because words can be misinterpreted. But when you play music and there's that universal flavor, it's, it's an incredible uh, experience. Yeah.